Thank you very much. Yeah, again with uh, Sven Bräunlich, and yeah. he's going to present the case. Thank you. Yeah. Good afternoon. This is uh, a reocclusion of the left SFA. Next slide, please. It's a male patient, 66 years old. He presents with claudication on the left side, 150 meter walking capacity, ABI is 0.62. He had already uh, coronary heart disease with uh, cabbage 2010, PTCA 2016, also minor stroke and atrial fibrillation. And uh, he had already also some interventions on the uh, lower limbs with the stenting of the iliac arteries in 2005 and repeat uh, SFA stenting uh, on the left side, 2002, 2008, and 2014. These are the risk factors, hypertension, hyperlipidemia. He's a former smoker and has uh, the relatively long-lasting diabetes mellitus. This is the corresponding angiography, left side here. There's a little stump present uh, of the SFA, but then long occlusion in the stents and also between the stents and the distal stent at uh, the level of the distal SFA is then uh, filled again, is patent. <laughs> and uh, yeah, our strategy here is from a crossover approach here to uh, cross with a guide wire and then do some arterectomy or debulking here of the artery with a laser catheter and uh, followed by application of truck coated balloons. Yeah, fine, thank you very much. Yeah, so we worked a little bit on that lesion already. Um, here you can see the angiography, and you can see here, yeah, the profunda artery is also not the strongest one. You can see that a little bit of contrast is going here into the occlusion. So as you heard, it was uh, attempted a little bit, and there were problems to get the wire here into the stent. Um, maybe this is the, the traces here of that attempt here. Uh, you can see that um, three centimeters proximal to that stent um, is, is occluded. Um, this time, well, now we tried the wire passage already. It was easy. Uh, often a second attempt is easier. Uh, here you can see over a uh, quick cross support catheter. Here we are actually taking a straight stiff terumo down. Well, the straight stiff terumo actually went down very easily, especially in the proximal part. However, the catheter had some problems. Well, we have the impression that um, it is partially thrombotic maybe now, this occlusion, maybe also proximal, where some attempts have been done. Uh, there is thrombus uh, later on in the stent. It's more fibrotic and difficult to pass for the catheter. So um, as it is typical for many instant occlusions that it's partially maybe hyperplastic reocclusion and the rest thrombosis. That can be problematic also for choosing the right treatment option. Uh, as it is, uh, we think, here. You can see the stent here, distal, is, uh, was open. And uh, for the first, uh, yeah, the first impression we had is that it is uh, it's a, a, a supera stent. However, it's not. Uh, that's actually an old wall stent. Yeah, you can see here at the ends, uh, supera has uh, these um, smooth ends. But here are these uh, pokey ends. And also the structure is is different, and this stand is um, uh, implanted 2002 and um, is currently open. That's uh, quite impressive, I must say. <laughs> it's a okay, short uh, stand. That, yeah, sh a short <laughs> stand. <laughs> uh, let me go back. Uh, here is the popliteal, then open. We push down the uh, quick cross catheter, and uh, you see here below the knee the under tibial artery is the strongest one here, filling here the foot. We, have, we also have some disease. Yeah, due to the, our feeling, uh, we uh, actually wanted to do this with filter protection, and we took a filter down through the quick cross catheter. You see here the quick cross, and we loaded a spider filter directly through that catheter down, six millimeter. And then, however, we um, uh, delivered over a short um, thrombolysis <coughs> catheter, side hole catheter, some thrombolysis, RTPA, eight milligram and we waited here for 10, 10 minutes. And then we started lasering here. This is a 2.3 millimeter laser uh, to go through. Uh, you can see that um, the stent is not everywhere fully open. So I think this um, can clearly be discussed which uh, device would be now the best one here to clean that, that uh, stent. Um, I feel quite happy here with having the laser 
especially in that area where the laser is very close to the stent struts, and I would be uh, feel not very well if I would use a turbo hawk, which is actually not approved for instant treatment uh, because they fear that it might hook here into the stent. Yeah, what do you think? Uh, would you do it differently or? Uh, no, it, it is a great, great idea in this case. Uh, did you discuss the possibility to use uh, uh, <coughs> aspiration uh, system uh, as a Rotarex? Uh, in uh, such a case, because uh, it was so Rotorec, easy, yeah. it was so easy to go through that, in my opinion, you must have a relatively large amount of thrombus in this area. Yeah, Rotorex was also um, we were discussing Rotorex, but then uh, actually, as I said, it was very difficult actually to push down the support catheter, and then we thought there's maybe really very little thrombus, and most of the um, uh, the occlusion is hyperplasia, so therefore then we decided here to take a laser. You know, any other options like... Uh, uh, can, can you try to... Uh, uh, do mode. you intend to use uh, only the single catheter, uh, laser catheter of 2.5, or you intend uh, to use uh, the other system permitting you to make a larger hole? Yeah, that's a very good idea. Here you can once again see how the laser goes here into the wall stand to use a tandem laser then here. So um, we have actually done now one pass, and this is the angiography after one pass. Uh, it's not so bad, but clearly not really happy at the firmer bifurcation. Also in between, there's probably still quite some, some thrombotic material. And, uh, but further down, I mean, proximal to the wall stand, which was also occluded, it's... Uh, nicely opened here with the laser. And uh, we do have a little bit of plug material or thrombus in the filter. Clearly, I think it was a good idea. We did a second pass here now with the laser, and we think it looks a little better. But again, yeah, we are not fully satisfied now. And now it's the question, indeed, to maybe uh, uh, continue with a tandem laser. Uh, it's uh, unfortunately a new device now. Uh, or just continue with ballooning, having a filter down. Um, also not sure, sure how many of you would use a tandem filter if you work with the filter. I mean, this is, means uh, going in and out and the position of the filter to hold it at one place may be a little bit problematic. So what do you think? What are the options here now? Yeah. What is the opinion of uh, the podium? Tandem, tandem well, certainly an argument can be made this thrombotic material just to realign the you know, you know, get distal and uh, you know, pedal this thing distally. The problem in this case is the proximal end. There's a very difficult landing zone there. Uh, but you know, you've got three millimeter scallops on the heparin bonded uh, viabond, so I imagine you could, uh, at this point, safely deploy a, a uh, stent graph and cover the entire track. And, you know, we just saw the data for ISR. That's got the best data for long lesion, as long as you stay above the knee. So. I think before I commit to relining, which I think you're right, John, if, if you can't get rid of the thrombus, that's the perfect solution for everything. Uh, I, I think whether it was a turbo power or not would depend if the, the debris was within the stent or not. If it was in the stent and then go to a bigger device, I don't think it is here. So I think the other option here would be to try to balloon and DCB and then reassess before you committed to a reline strategy. That, that's what, I think what I would do. Uh, and uh, Andre, what is your decision now? Do you intend to go just with the truck yeah. with the balloon back, or what do you do intend to do now? Yeah, we think. Yeah, we think we treat here with a duck coated balloon. That's actually was our in, in, uh, initial intention and uh, strategy. Um, however, first, maybe also due to the fact that it was sometimes difficult to pass here. Uh, use an angioscalp here to pre-treat here this once again. Yeah, maybe it's the wrong decision that we might have more embolization into the filter, um, but maybe it uh, will look nice. Uh, so therefore, we decided here uh, to use the angioscalp 5200 uh, to do now a slow inflation here and see how it looks like. Yeah, a little bit I have concerns about the uh, profunda artery, which is small, and I don't want to uh, squeeze material here into the profunda. But you see, uh, some parts open very easily. 
Others uh, have a hard time to open here, especially proximal to the stent or in the stent. Um, I'm not with high pressure now, but I'm already at uh, three, four. Would so it's a mixed lesion. Would be biased uh, in these uh, cases uh, to uh, not to protect, but to place uh, a guide wire into the profunda during uh, the inflation of the balloon. <laughs> Yeah, maybe uh, it could, yeah, we would have had place to do this. Um, I personally think, well, this is not a coronary bifurcation where everything moves. Uh, should always be, even if it comes to an occlusion here of the profunda, possible to get a wire in. So we actually rarely do this. Which you may feel better indeed, yeah. Which pressure are you now applying? So we are... We are actually now at eight atmospheres. <clears throat> and I may keep it here a little bit. And then hopefully we still have a flow and not a basket full, which, uh, uh, yeah, and, and no flow. <coughs> there are 10 atmospheres. And I think the balloon is nicely open. And clearly thereafter, we will continue with Dracut balloons. Hopefully we can do this uh, with the Stellarex balloon. How long are you inflating the balloon normally in such cases? Yeah, yeah as, as you do, uh, we do also relatively prolonged preparation of the artery with balloons. So I'd say it's, it's usually two minutes, three minutes. I constantly look here at the inflator. If the, uh, drug, uh, if the pressure goes down slowly, that means the balloon still has possibility to expand a little more. And uh, then I, I wait, uh, actually I wait until the, uh, the pressure is uh, stable and then I think I've reached the diameter which I can reach and then usually two, three minutes are over and then we deflate. Andre, do you have any concern about the metal to metal interaction of the balloon that's got a you know, 200 length balloon that's got a nitinol cage like the chocolate balloon or the angio score within prior stents? Any concern of that? Uh, so far, yeah, theoretically, maybe that it's somehow you mean hook into the stent struts, the segments. Uh, so far, we haven't seen a problem. Uh, so therefore, no, actually not. You have seen a problem or? We've not. I've purposely really not used a chocolate balloon for instant restenosis, but we used a vascular track with this balloon. No, we've not seen a problem. We've actually had some trouble with the vascular track. Yeah. Uh, the high pressures along the balloon. It also tends to have a longer shoulder elongation sometimes right. on the long balloons. And then here, that would be a problem going into the comic center. Actually, all balloons do that at high pressure, and the longer ones do it more because just to put as a percentage. Oh, sorry. Okay, gonna do an angiography. Let's cross fingers that we have some flow. Not so bad. Ooh, let's see the filter. Quite happy that, with this. The results, uh, in my opinion, it's is uh, very impressive. Uh, you have only to go back with a normal balloon distally and proximally uh, to inflate for 10 minutes, yeah. and then well, you we will have uh, yeah. uh, optimal yeah. results. Approximately, personally, I wouldn't do nothing more. But uh, after 10 centimeters, you have two uh, tandem stenosis uh, and distally. Yeah. So, but the result is, uh, yeah. Well, we think we will treat Decent. everything with drug coated balloons now from that area where we have five uh, or oh, six unten, uh, where we have not touched it six. with a balloon. We actually start now distal with a six, it may take a six, yeah. and uh, then we see whether also proximal we can take a six. Uh, but uh, I think. Um, 
It shows already that uh, luckily we choose maybe the right uh, options here. And yeah, I think it will look quite nice after DCB treatment, which I think definitely we have to do. We cannot leave it like this without dark photo balloon treatment. Okay, but uh, this is a, a great result. Yeah. And uh, without any ulterior metal, and uh, personally I'm surprised that you have this, it is a very old uh, wall stand. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and we are surprised working. too, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thanks so much for this uh, great uh, demonstration. Fine. Thank and, you. Uh, we, uh, I see you later.